firstly, Dr. David, it's a pleasure to have you here today, and we're super excited to welcome you at FIME. Hi, yes, wonderful to be here. Fantastic. So I'm very excited to talk to you about, you know, the topic you'll be discussing at FIME as well. So can you let, tell me a little bit more about that? Sure. Yeah, well, I'll be talking about artificial intelligence, uh, describing a bit more about how AI can be used to create better experiences for both patients and providers, and also to improve outcomes at both the individual and at the population level. I'll be focusing on high impact use cases, uh, such as clinical uh, and clinician workforce crisis, and also ways that we can improve the overall efficiency of healthcare, uh, remove some of that waste from the system. And also, I want to talk about how organizations and individuals can apply AI responsibly. Amazing. And what are some of the emerging AI technologies and trends that have the potential to further enhance patient experiences and improve healthcare outcomes in the near future? Yeah, so if we start with uh, some of the newer technologies that have been uh, brought to the market, uh, such as ambient clinical intelligence or ACI, uh, these are the technologies that will transform the experiences for both the patients and the providers. So like, what is ACI? Uh, imagine you go see a doctor and during that doctor visit, uh, the doctor is uh, talking and then turning to the computer and typing in as you're talking. Now, largely that is a, a reason, the reason we, that happens is because a lot of this information has to be documented into the electronic health record. Well, now with ambient clinical intelligence, the doctor and the patient can have a conversation. And then at the very end of that uh, experience, all of that will have been captured codified, brought into a, in the format of a clinical progress note, the clinician can then review that, make a few edits, hit a button, and then bring it directly into the medical record. This is an incredible time saver for both the clinicians, but it also improves the experience for both the clinician and the patient as they're having that interaction. Uh, that's just one example of how natural language processing is being used in healthcare to be able to help us create these better experiences. And, and we see this not just with voice, but we, with text and with images. And then now with generative AI, we see the opportunity for this type of artificial intelligence to be applied in so many other different ways. Absolutely. It's the way of the future in many ways. And with this, what are some of the ethical considerations and challenges that need to be addressed when implementing AI in healthcare to ensure patient safety, privacy, data security, and equitable access to AI-driven technologies? So let's start with the data itself. Uh, there are many forms of data, and a lot of that data, typically the process for how we collaborate and communicate, uh, is in the form of uh, de-identification. So you, you strip out the name and some of the unique identifiers. Well, some of these data sets, uh, you really can't de-identify through that process, like a genomics data set. You know, that's the type of information that is inherently one that needs to be highly secure and kept private. And one of the challenges that we have is that uh, these type of data sets oftentimes uh, are brought together in environments in which there's a possibility that someone could potentially hack into. So we see cyber attacks as a major concern. So, so managing all that data and finding ways that technology can help us ensure through privacy protection uh, that data can be managed and collaborated in a way that preserves privacy is extremely important. Now, one of the exciting technologies that allows us to be able to do that is something called confidential compute, where data can be brought together in a, the, a secure enclave. And in this case, the, the processing is done directly in the microchip. And that allows us to be able to ensure that the data does not get exposed to third parties uh, and, and even to the developers. And, and in that process, it allows us to be able to have privacy preserving confident, confidential compute. Now that's the, on the data side. From the AI side, we also recognize that you know, AI is developed by developers based on their data sets that they have excel accessible. Uh, the challenge is that the developers may have inherent biases that may be uh, subconscious. Uh, and then the data sets are also limited, both in terms of size and diversity. So what we're now realizing is that AI in itself uh, could potentially introduce areas where bias might be pre uh, presented, or it may not be generalizable, and it may not be understandable. And these are the areas where we, uh, as an industry, need to start thinking about how we can develop responsible AI practices that will allow us to be able to ensure that AI is done responsibly and to limit that bias or to remove that bias. And when it comes to equitable access as well, I mean, could you t like expand a little bit on that as well? Because AI is so important and, you know, of course, if it touches everyone in the healthcare community, it could be wonderful and so transformative. 
Yes, so absolutely. So in terms of access, uh, one of the exciting things that we saw with the use of large language models and generative AI was that we had this ability for individuals to be able to access the artificial intelligence in ways that we couldn't have done before through a normal conversation, a chat. And so when you when you look at chat GPT as an example, we now have a chat interface that allows anyone around the world to be able to ask questions using this large language model and be able to generate outputs that could be used in the form of text, images, and even code. So essentially what you're doing is you're empowering everyone around the world to be able to take advantage of this. That's that's one of the exciting areas for us as we think about how AI can be democratized. Fantastic. And we spoke a little bit about this earlier as well. And personalized medicine is becoming a big um, area of interest. So can you tell me a little bit more about, you know, what kind of examples of AI applications have led to improved healthcare outcomes, such as more accurate diagnosis or personalized medicine um, and healthcare treatment plans? Sure. In terms of uh, thinking about how we can improve the experience for individuals, uh, a great example would be around clinical trials matching. Why is that important? Well, it turns out that if we think about uh, research and the opportunity for us to advance research, we need individuals to enroll and we need to make sure that uh, people are aware of that uh, clinical trial. In fact, if you were to, you, you were diagnosed with cancer and you need to, to understand wh- what are all the clinical trials out there, uh, it's unlikely that your clinician uh, that you're seeing would know all the information that's out there readily available and be able to match that real time but we now have AI technology that can do that. In fact, there's some great technology use cases where a person could uh, type in information and then it searches all the major, all the databases that it has accessible, it's accessible to it. It matches the inclusion exclusion criteria and it tells you these are the trials that you're eligible for or vice mm-hmm. versa. If you're running clinical trials and you have a large database, and you wanna know who's eligible for this, who should we be providing outreach to? You can do that match uh, real time. And this is uh, one of the great opportunities for us to be able to start taking these technologies and applying it so we can get accurate decision-making relative to who's eligible for specific interventions. It's truly transformative in every way. And when we also spoke about, you know, enhancing patient experiences in healthcare settings. So coming back to that, and how has the integration of, you know, AI really enhanced that? And which areas specifically have seen really major improvements? One of the exciting things that we saw during the pandemic was the use of an AI-based chatbot to enable individuals to get the right answer for them Uh, to be able to help answer questions like, do I need to go in for testing or should I come in for hospitalization or should I just stay at home and be quarantined? Uh, That was based on guidelines that were, you know, nationally, national guidelines, though in the United States, the CDC guidelines uh, could be uh, guidelines that were very specific for our healthcare organizations. But we we saw the evolution of the chatbot uh, from something that was done for more consumer uh, experience to now something that was relative, you know, for specific for a healthcare use case, uh, transformed the way that we delivered information to individuals. Now, the problem is that not all the questions that people have can be answered by a chatbot. And so now what we're starting to see is that ability to combine chatbots with large language models and generative AI. So after, uh, let's imagine that a person has uh, typed in or responded for that question and it doesn't uh, get answered through the chatbot, what can happen then is it can then search into the large language models whereby if you upload all the documents and the files into your own cloud tenant, you know, in which case you manage all the information properly, you, you have an ability to be able to then use the large language models to be able to answer questions based off of those guidelines and those uh, websites that you have pre-specified. And this has now expanded the capability of the chatbot to be able to provide questions, real-time uh, answers to the questions that people may have and will be a dramatic game changer in terms of how we engage with patients that they go forward. This is such an interesting space to watch, I think, for healthcare spectators and for practitioners alike. And uh, thank you so much again, Dr. David, for, you know, expanding on this really interesting topic. Would you like to add anything else, perhaps, you know, that the audiences would be very keen to kind of um, hear about? 
Sure. I, I think one of the things that we continue to talk quite a bit about is the responsible use of AI. Uh, when I talk about that, I, I typically talk about the key guiding principles. But one of the things that we also need to recognize is that there's some basic rules that we should be applying. First and foremost, if you're looking at generative AI, you can play around on the Internet, but better to have your own enterprise version, a cloud instance that you manage, privacy preserved, allows you to be able to move all your documents into it. Second of all, let's start thinking of high impact, low risk use cases. Those are examples uh, where we can have great impact and then mitigate the concerns of potential harm that may be due to some of the fact that errors could be introduced. And the third is put the human in the middle. The, the, the human is the ability for us to ensure that there is a, a constant review of that information. And so it's never just kind of brought and automated in, in, in a way that uh, doesn't have that QA. And the last is really just about ensuring that you put in the right governance and the quality assurance processes to ensure that the AI is properly managed. 100%. Well, thank you so much again, Dr. David. This is such an interesting topic and we're so excited to have you at FIME. And I'm sure the audiences are going to learn so much more through the talk. Mm -hmm.